I was gonna go, I'm gonna talk today about Max Hastings book Inferno and Inferno is a really good book on World War II, and it doesn't focus on the generals, it doesn't focus on the politicians as much as just ordinary people who are affected by the war. Um, regular soldiers, regular civilians, regular housewives, uh, junior officers, um, it doesn't focus on a lot of major political or historical figures. And it's doing that to show how bad the World War II affected the regular person. And the book notes that 27,000 people on average, um, 27,000 people died daily between September of 1939 and August of 1945. And um, it notes the complexities of that war. Like, Finland was technically in the Axis powers, but how they got drawn into the war was because the Soviets threatened their border. Actually, back when the Soviets were allied with Nazi Germany. And it talks about how courageously Finland defended their border. They just eventually got overpowered by the Soviets, but not, um, not at... But not at, not with, not without the Soviets paying the price. Excuse me. And it talks about how a uh, lieutenant colonel in the Finnish army, um, Lieutenant Colonel Pajari, collapsed from a heart condition in the middle of the conflict, but still had the will to carry on and to keep fighting, which I thought was a very good analysis. And it talks about how at the beginning of the war, Britain and France signed an alliance with Poland, and they declared war on Nazi Germany, but they really didn't aid Poland very much. And it also talks about how the, because around that time the Nazis were allied with the Soviets, that the Soviets, um, that when Polish people tried to flee to the Soviet Union, the NKVD, which was what the KGB was known at the time, they imprisoned 25,000 Polish people in concentration camps. Excuse me, they executed 25,000 Polish people. Excuse me, they imprisoned more in concentration camps, but they executed at least 25,000 Polish people. But it also talks about how the, how the Soviets, when bore the brunt of the war when Germany declared war on them. Like, the most American housewives a lot of times had to deal with during the war was having a husband gone, of course, and raising a family, which is tough, but a lot of times their worrisome was not finding the right meat or the right steak at the grocery store, but not going hungry. And there were reports that the NKVD released with the Soviets that there were Soviet people practicing cannibalism because food was that short during Operation Barbarossa. That's when the Germans invaded the uh, Soviet Union. And it's from a very global perspective. Um, it's very politically neutral. I don't think anybody would get offended when reading it. And um, it does talk about the tenacity that Britain had when they were all alone by themselves, particularly in the Battle of Britain. So it doesn't insult Britain at all. Um, it does talk about how uh, French people felt betrayed at Dunkirk, um, that Britain didn't evacuate enough of them, even though Britain evacuated more than France gave them credit for. Um, but that's one reason that why a lot of Frenchmen decided to ally themselves with the Vichy government and fight for the Vichy government, which was the government, the French government that collaborated with the Nazis uh, during World War II. Um, like I said, it's very politically neutral. I don't think anybody should be offended by it. Just go into it with an open mind, and um, and you'll be surprised what you can what you can discover. Um, the vast majority of the Allied casualties in World War II were the Soviet. Uh, were the Soviet Union. The British and the Americans were only 2% of the casualties, but that doesn't take away what the British and the Americans did during World War II, and he doesn't do that. He commends what the British and the Americans did. So anyways, hope I was doing well. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.